It looks like all of the structure, and I am pretty sure that the hood is exactly the same. Welcome to Randy Rodshot, folks. I had hoped to drag the other International out of the pasture so I could cut the bed out of it and start working on putting the bed in the International that we've been working on. Plans change! <laughs> what we're going to do today is I'm going to go ahead and get the fenders off of this Viking, right, this 1957 ton and a half. Uh, it was our old wheat truck. I'm going to get the fenders off of it and put the half ton fenders on it. I'll show you, a, I'll insert a clip here that shows the half ton hood on this truck. There's been some discussion about whether the big hood, you know, the ton and a half and bigger hood, is the same or not as the half ton hood. Now, this is a half ton hood. I believe it's 55 or 56. But as you can see, it is setting on the ton and a half. So I haven't changed the fenders. Still have the same cab. And the hood is bolted down. Let me raise that thing up. Gonna have to set the camera down. You can see I've got it bolted down to the to the ton and a half hood hinges. I haven't done anything but bolt the hood on. And I've still got to adjust it a little bit. It's sticking out here, but you can see the gap in the back. All right, so I would say that the hoods for the big trucks are the same as the hoods for the half ton, three quarter ton, and one ton. Now that actually surprised me. But like I said, I don't have one of these trucks. This is the only one, where, this is the only 55 through 59 that I've ever owned. I've got a lot more experience with the 47, the first series 55. Anyway, I think, uh, <laughs> I think that kind of ends the argument. The hoods are the same, but in terms of how they fit. I gotta tell you, I thought the hoods were different, right? I've, I've, got, I've got a number of the 1947 to the first series uh, Chevy pickup, but this is the only, this is the only 55 to 59 that I've got. And I, so I've never really been, I've never really played with these things. I, on the on the previous generation, I can tell you those hoods are different. <laughs> they're, they're not, they're shorter and longer and yeah. But on this series of Chevy truck, those hoods are interchangeable. So, so to start this off with, let me, let me walk you around. So we bought this truck at an auction and it was all painted. You know, it had, that's yeah, probably some, uh, some uh, implement paint or whatever, but it was painted all nice and brown. But there is a lot of Bondo <laughs> in these fenders. You start digging around, I, I'm expecting, I, I would expect this to all be rusted out. I don't know what the doors actually look like. I haven't poked around on those things. The lights, right? The lights are busted out up there. And mice have gotten around on this, so the header panel could use some love. And if we look at the inside, you can see maybe there's a little bit of work that needs to be done up there. What happened to this poor truck is that we had a, we had, my dad had a, alfalfa field down on the down on the river and the river flooded so this truck was three feet under the water 
it was completely submerged out out in the uh, out in the field because because the river we 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 got a lot of rain that year, <laughs> so we went down and drug it up. I spent a couple of days cleaning it out. Getting all the mud as I could, as best I could, out of the nooks and crannies. That's why it's gutted because I went in here with a shop vac and a high pressure washer, and I tried to get as much of the mess out of it as I could. The good thing is, relatively speaking, it's not all rusted out. Now that's a, <laughs> you know, take that with a grain of salt. Never paid much attention to it. But, there's got to be some shenanigans going on inside this. Uh, this is one of those cases where, this is one of those cases where we didn't do that. So this says, you know, this has a, I don't know what that is, half inch gap there and they welded, they welded, uh, welded the fender on. <laughs> so, I don't know what I'm going to get into, but we're going to get the fender off. Um, just as a note, the difference between the small trucks and the big trucks is probably, and I got, I'd have to measure, but I think it's about two inches. The big trucks, this distance here, is somewhere around four inches. On the half-ton trucks, it, it's about two inches. What that, what that means is the grill opening on the big trucks is bigger than the grill opening on the small trucks. So, I would like to, you know, I'd like to keep this, I'd like to keep this bar in here, but I'm not sure how that's going to work out. I suspect, I suspect that uh, it's not going to fit, but we're going to do our best. So, I'm going to put the camera back on the tripod here. All right, I'm going to start seeing the bolts come out. I'd cut you back in here for a minute. These headlights are held on by, let's see here, these stove head screws. All right, so the shape of that screwdriver is like kind of like a figure eight. Anyway, a lot of these old Chevy trucks have bolt heads like that. Down the other toolbox, I got a, uh, I got a set of these that's uh, <laughs> a bigger variety. This one seems to work here. All right, I'm gonna get back at it. And there's always surprises in these old trucks. <laughs> Let me show you what somebody did at some point in this truck's history. At some point, somebody decided to weld, <laughs> weld that fender to the cab. <laughs> so, you know, I guess it's not surprising. This thing's getting kind of old, and it was an old farm truck, but... Oh, well. <laughs> I thought you would, I thought that'd make you smile. Any of you, any of you guys that's uh, dealt with some of these old farm trucks, you probably recognize that. <laughs> All right, let me get that cut out of there. Well, I got the fenders off. Just so you know, uh, you know, just for your reference, that took about two hours. <laughs> but the good news is, I only broke one bolt. I'm pretty happy about that. No impacts, lots of WD-40, and a little bit of... <laughs> no broken bolts. The, well, I, one broken bolt. And it was the one that held the fender to the... Uh, 
through the inner fender well, so that one's easy to fix. The ones I'm happy about, the ones I'm happy about is that these top fender bolts came out and they're not rusted out. Those are a pain to fix, it looks like. So I'm happy about that. Obviously we got some issues down at the uh, down at the bottom, but it looks like all of the problem was with the fenders more so than with the cab. So <laughs> I'd like to say that my new fenders are going to uh, help out, but as you're going to see, my new fenders may not be as good as these. <laughs> all right, let me let me open the door. I'm going to put these in the bucket of the tractor. And uh, actually, I'm going to go get those and then I can set those side to side and you can see the difference because I want you to see the difference in the wheel opening too. All right, let me go get the tractor. All right, so I've got, I've got both of the driver's side fenders here. So let's, let's take some measurements. So from the front of the hood opening to... You know about where it curves I've got about four inches right there that's on the big truck on uh, smaller trucks half ton three-quarter ton one tons I got about two inches that's where the difference in the width of the fenders is and in the big truck makes it up Right, the big truck makes it up by widening it out. The door is still the same door, right? So where the door line is, is it wider? But you can, you can see that the side of the fender bellies out. And that's the two inches that we're measuring on the front up there. So the fender is two inches wider. Now let's have a look at the opening. Now, <laughs> My opening is just a little bit crusty. Let me set the camera up here and so I can hold it because I don't, I think I'm going to need two hands to measure this. Hang on. All right. I want to have to do some guessing down on this end, but looks like somewhere around 44, 44 and a half. Let's go measure the half ton. Let me get the camera around there. Well, looks like the half ton somewhere around 38 inches, 37 and a half, 38 and a half. I don't know what it's supposed to be, but it's somewhere around 38 inches. So if we say the big one's 44 and this one's 38, this opening is six inches narrower on the half ton. Well, the body line, something short of six inches, so let's say five and a half. Yeah, let's say about five and a half inches. Let's have a look at this one. Well, that one's closer to five. So the big truck, the wheel opening is taller. And the big truck is wider. Now, if you're really interested, um, the GM Heritage Center offers vehicle information kits. So if you go into Google, GM Heritage Center vehicle information kits, it will pop open to GM's uh, archives. I use this thing all the time, right? I, I, what it is, is the for lack of a better term, it's the order book for every car General Motors has made since 1900 whatever. So I've got one downloaded for the Camaro. I've got one downloaded for all of the pickups. And what's nice about it on the on the newer ones, they give you all the RPO codes and what was what was available, what wasn't available. On this one, <laughs> it does the same thing, but it actually shows a side view of all the different trucks. So, you know, if you're a PowerPoint or a graphics person, you can actually 
screenshot both of the images and throw them on top of each other. You know, make one transparency. But anyway, GM Heritage Center Vehicle Information Kits. Just Google that and it will pop up. And it's got the, all of the Cadillac, Buick, Pontiac, Olds, Chevrolet. It's got them all in there. Um, so, maybe you want more details, you can, uh, you can download that. Other than that, um, I think uh, I'm giving you the critical dimensions. <laughs> all right, well, these fenders, <coughs> you know, I kind of tease that maybe these fenders are uh, not in as good a shape as the ones I took off. I think that may be putting it lightly. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me get the camera around here, and I'll show you what we got to work with. And uh, it'll do what I need to do right now. But down the road, there's, uh, there's some significant work going to have to go into these fenders. <laughs> Maybe my lovely bride will, uh, will uh, you know, decide I need a new set of aftermarket fenders. We'll see about that. So this is the driver's side. And I think this is the good one. <laughs> so, you know, there's lots of Bondo up here. And this has been, looks like it's been cut out with a torch. The bottom, you know, the bottom don't look that bad down there. It's rusty and crusty. But when you flip it over, looks like someone, uh, someone cut that off with a torch too. So the bottom fender mount's going to have to be remade. Got some, got some crusty up here. Looks like there's been a lot of welding on this thing. Anyway, that's the good one. <laughs> Let me get the other one up here. Okay. So, it's kind of got the same problem down there. There's a little more metal gone. <laughs> then you come up here. You know, I guess, I guess I could say, you know, well, this one's not as bad. They did try to fix it. Uh, well, maybe not. <laughs> so, this is, this, this is interesting. And you get down here. I guess the, uh, the wind down here is it doesn't have all the welding slobber. But it, it, it may have some issues up here. Looks like at uh, some point there's some Bondo on this. It, it doesn't look like, it doesn't look like the eyebrows are gone. I mean, that alone is a win, right? <laughs> okay, well, I was gonna put these on. Well, I'm still gonna put these on. I'm just not sure, I'm not sure how I'm gonna put these on yet. Let's see here. Well, the driver's side has the upper fender mount. I'd like to get this set on there so I can see where this wheel is. So, I think what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna clear this mess up. I'm gonna put the driver's fender up here because I'd really like to see, you know, where that front tire needs to go in that fender well. So I can figure out where the cab mount needs to go. It'd make me happy if I could just get that thing centered. <laughs> All right, let me clear this up, and uh, I'll get right back to you. All right, folks. Well, as you saw, those fenders were just a <laughs> those fenders were a little bit wiggly, but I learned something. So this is the Viking radiator support. Those are the Viking inner fenders. Those are the Apache, the half-ton fenders, and the Apache hood. That all bolts together, back in the same holes. I didn't know that. <laughs> so, I suspected my fenders weren't beat up so much, this thing would fit pretty good. Let me, uh, let me show you. So there's the hood gap in the back. That looks pretty good. 
And I really think that if I uh, fix some of the <laughs> fix some of the mouse holes, where I could tighten the thing down, and I'm beginning to think that this hood has been just a little bit flattened. Don't know. Still got to play with it. The the ends of the fenders and the ends of the hood aren't aligning right now, but I still think that a lot of that is a lot of that is due to the fact that I just ain't got this thing bolted down. But I think that kind of I think that kind of closes the deal. If you have a Viking and you want to make a half ton, it looks like all of the structure and the sheet metal are completely interchangeable. And I am pretty sure that the hood is exactly the same. Now, I think I said earlier, this is a 5556. It doesn't have the spears on it. So when this is all said and done, I'll end up using the 57 hood. I'm probably going to go get the 57 hood and put on here just so I can just so I can sort of check to see what's what's out of kelter here because you know this hood and fenders came off of the same pickup so they have to align or they should align but they're so bent and twisted it's hard for me to tell so I'm pretty happy about that actually I'm really happy about that that means this swap is going to is going to uh, go a lot better than I had uh, thought it might. So let's have a look at the wheels. Let me see if I can get down here at high level. All right. So I tried to draw a tried to draw a black mark up there where I thought the center of that wheel opening was. There you you can see it there. Well, I'm not so sure that that wheel, I mean, it could go back. I could be all right with it going back maybe an inch, maybe half inch, somewhere in there. But all in all, I think that's probably where the factory put it. So as we get going along here down the road, I will, uh, I may or may not move this thing back an inch that or back somewhere between a half inch and an inch i'm not sure it is really close if you kind of kind of eyeball the the rim right there it's just just before it starts to go just before it starts to turn and the same thing with and the same thing with this side this one maybe just a little bit Maybe just a little bit after the turn, so maybe a half inch back. I don't know. That's definitely livable. That's making this frame swap kind of a. Uh, this is a this is a pretty nice setup, right? Those are factory. Uh, what are that? That's the spare tire off the Explorer. If I get just a little bit of. Just a little bit of tire on this thing with some, you know, hot rod offset. This thing is gonna, this thing is gonna fit good. This thing is gonna fit really good. And I went ahead and I put a spacer under there. In this case, it's a two before. To sort of level out the truck. I may have this, the back of this truck needs to go that way just a little bit, it looks like. So I need to get it, I need to get it moved just a little bit. Well, I don't know, folks. What do you think? 
I think that is gonna look good. All right. Well, <laughs> I appreciate you guys watching. Those, those of you who watched the, uh, the, the, the Explorer uh, video, man, I appreciate it. That video, you, you guys, there's a lot of people watch that video. <laughs> so I appreciate it. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe, make a comment. If you have made a comment last three or four days, I, I'm not sure. The, the, I got a little note from YouTube saying the comments were all messed up. So if you made a comment and I haven't responded, it's not because I uh, decided not to respond. I haven't seen any comments since like Tuesday or Wednesday last week. So <laughs> if you made a comment and I haven't responded, I, I just didn't see it. Um, anyway, <laughs> until next time, uh, man. It's late in the afternoon, and I'm going to have to do a lot of editing tonight. <laughs> Random Rod Shop out.